Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. It's time for another Deep Sky Challenge. And this one is hard. I can't find the name of the viewer who suggested it. I'm sorry. Whoever you are, if you're watching this, thank you so much for the suggestion. We're going to look for a globular cluster inside of the Great Andromeda Galaxy called Mayall 2 or G1. That's right, a globular cluster in another galaxy. How cool is that? This thing is far away. It's 2.5 million light years away, and yet we can see it with our own eyes. Yes, if you have a telescope of at least 8 inches aperture, or 200 millimeters, you can look at a globular cluster 2.5 million light years away that is orbiting M31, the great Andromeda galaxy. It's not easy to see, but I'm going to show you how to find it and how to see it. It's in the constellation Andromeda, and it's best seen in autumn in the northern hemisphere. First of all, some people speculate that this object is actually the remnants of a dwarf galaxy that the Andromeda galaxy swallowed, so to speak. The Hubble Space Telescope has some dramatic pictures of it. According to NASA, it's a globular cluster. Not that they're always right, but I'm just going to call it a globular cluster. And it has very old stars. Mayall 2 is also known as M31 G1 or G1 or Andromeda's cluster. It doesn't have an NGC designation. It was only discovered in 1953 by American astronomers Nicholas Mayall and Olin Egan using the Palomar 48-inch Schmidt plate. It has an apparent magnitude of 13.8 and an apparent size of 0.6 arc seconds depending on who you ask. Some say it's smaller. So it's tiny and it's dim. But its absolute magnitude is negative 10.94, making it the brightest globular cluster in our local group of galaxies. It has the luminosity of 10 million suns. It's more than twice as massive as Omega Centauri, the largest globular cluster in the Milky Way. And G1 may be 12 billion years old and it might have an intermediate mass black hole. For visual observation of this, it's faint and tiny and far, but we're going to find it and we're going to see it with our own eyes. I'll give you the RA and DEC coordinates, so you can put that into your go-to system if you don't have it in your database. But I'll also show you how to star hop to it. It's just 2.5 degrees from the core of the Andromeda galaxy. But it's easier to start at Miroc, which is magnitude 2, and then go north from Miroc to Mu Andromedae, magnitude 3.8, and then northwest 3 degrees to 32 Andromedae, which is magnitude 5.3. So you may or may not be able to see it with your naked eye, but it will look very bright in the telescope or the finder scope. That star has three stars on one side of it. And then once you locate 32 Andromedae, it's just one and a half degrees to Mayall 2. And here's a detailed star chart to use to guide you there because depending on the aperture of your telescope, it may just appear star-like. It's next to a triangle of 12 and 13 magnitude stars. And if you have a big telescope, you might be able to see the two magnitude 14 stars next to G1. So I've told you enough about it to hopefully pique your interest. And I'll be back soon with my telescopes, this one and this one, and maybe the 10 inch as well, to track it down and look at a globular cluster in another galaxy. So it's very clear tonight. So I'm getting out the swan because I'm going to try to see Mayall 2 globular cluster in M31 with a 15 inch telescope. When it gets darker, I'll be back. I didn't see it in the database of my Argo Navis, but that's okay because the batteries died because it's pretty cold out here. But I have it on this star chart from Interstellarum, so I know how to star up. We're gonna go from Miroc to Mu Andromedae and from Mu Andromedae, we're going to 
go to 32 Andromeda, three stars um, on one side of it that are going to point us toward G1. So let me star hop. Let me find that uh, 32 Andromeda and then try to star hop over to G1. Okay, I think I see it. I want to magnify. I can see Mu Andromeda with my naked eye. And then I hopped over looking for that pattern, 32 Andromeda with the three stars on one side of it and got that in the center. And then I tried to move, move over to a triangle that May all two makes with two other stars. And I think I see it, but I want to magnify a little bit more. Okay. All right. I see it better, but I, I, I'm not going to, you can't make out individual stars in it unless you have the Hubble Space Telescope, but I see it better. I had to first use this 20 millimeter eyepiece because it's hard to just jump from 50 times to 250 times because then you lose where you were. But I um, went with the 20 millimeter that was 75 times magnification and then I went up to 250 but it still <laughs> doesn't it it you can see that it's a, a disc and it looks like there's something to one side of it I think that's the two stars that are nearby I don't know what magnitude they are but uh, see may all two in the swan woohoo <laughs> Pretty neat to see a globular in another galaxy. This globular orbits M31. Pretty cool. Hello. I'm out here in Levining, California. Supposedly a Bortal 2, but I, I think it's really a Bortal 3 based on my SQM. But it's very clear this evening. There's no moon and it's very open where I am. I can see horizon to horizon. No trees blocking any view in any direction which is really nice. And I'm here with my 10 inch Dobsonian to try to see Mayall 2, also known as G1 or 224G1. It's 2.5 million light years away and it's magnitude 13.7. So it could theoretically be seen with a six inch telescope, but it would only look like a pinpoint or a star. But with a larger telescope, eight inches or larger, it should look kind of like a hazy patch or maybe a nebula and the larger you go the more detail you could see but you can never resolve any stars in it with any earth-based telescope but I just want to try to see it with this 10 inch telescope so I'm going to wait for Andromeda to get a little higher before I look for it Now I'm looking at Mayall 2, globular cluster in Andromeda, and I can see it. It just it looks like a dot right now. I'm at a very low magnification though, so I'm going to magnify. I, I use star sense, but just to make sure, I did use that detailed star chart and found that triangle. and. I can see Mayall too. It was easier than the footprint nebula. <laughs> but anyway, I want to magnify to see if I can at least turn it into a hazy patch. Let me take this eyepiece out and get some more magnification. Be back in a second. Now I'm at 340 times magnification and I do see a hazy disk. That's about all I can make out, but that's all may all too. Globular cluster or remnant of a dwarf galaxy in Andromeda. Pretty cool to see a globular cluster in another galaxy. Pretty cool with a 10 inch telescope, no less. Hello again. It's a beautiful evening for stargazing. So I'm out here with my eight inch Mick Cassegrain. I have this telescope on a go-to mount but Mayall 2 is not in the database. So 
I'm gonna, I, I did put in the RA and deck coordinates for this object rather than star hop. And so I know the star pattern really well because I looked at this object with two Dobsonians, but unfortunately the star pattern is gonna be reversed, which is very confusing to me to go from a Dobsonian to a Schmidt cast grain, but I, I think I can figure it out and I'm gonna try to look at it in a minute after I turn this red light off. But it's gonna be a challenge because this eight inch telescope has a limiting stellar magnitude of about 14.2 and G1 or Mayall 2 has a magnitude, apparent magnitude of 13.7. So I'm right at the limit of this telescope's capability. But it helps that it's a very clear evening and I'm under relatively dark skies. I'm in a rural location. I didn't take an SQM, but it's probably around 12.4 or something like that. So uh, I'm gonna turn off the light. Uh, I'm gonna make sure the star pattern is correct at a lower magnification and then I'm gonna magnify because you need to magnify for this object once you get in the right place. Be back in a minute. I saw May all too with this eight inch mint casagrain. <laughs> Woo -hoo! It was faint. I had to use averted vision. I had to jiggle the telescope, but to make sure I was in the right place, I started at um, about 56 times magnification with this 36 millimeter eyepiece and got in the right area. And then I went to this 20 millimeter, put me around 100 times. And then I magnified with this six millimeter to about 334 times because you want to magnify as much as possible to see this. But <laughs> I saw it and it was much fainter than it was in the other two telescopes. But I saw Mayall too in an eight inch telescope and you can too, but you've got to go to a dark sky site because it's hard, it's very faint. So go to a dark sky site. If you have a smaller telescope, you have a better chance with a bigger telescope, a much better chance because this thing is faint. It's far away, <laughs> but woot woot. I saw it with an eight inch telescope. Alrighty, that's it for now on May All 2 or G1 Globular Cluster in the Andromeda Galaxy. See you in the next one. Dark skies forever. Sula. Signing off.